I cannot keep up with the news today. OpenAI has dropped O1. They have dropped O1 Pro. They have a 12 Days of Christmas theme, so more is coming. And I was just about to make a post on the strategy that OpenAI is using for pricing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk briefly about O1 and O1 Pro and what, what they are. And then we're going to talk about the pricing strategy because it's highly relevant because guess what? O1 Pro is $200 a month. Pull out your pocketbooks. So why did they release them together? What are they good for? Both O1 and O1 Pro look like from the tests that they like they are much better at coding and science and mathematics. This is the direction that OpenAI has been hinting they're going at in 2025. This absolutely validates that. Now you might wonder what is the difference between O1, which is available in the 20 buck plans and O1 Pro, which is gonna cost $200 a month. Like you can go play with O1 now. You can go play with it in the plus plan. Well, the difference seems to be if you are a PhD researcher in science or mathematics, or potentially someone who needs expert level code analysis, you would be willing to pay 200 bucks a month for somewhat better performance versus even O1. And O1 from the testing looks substantially better from O1 preview. So I'm gonna link the full paper on the test results Dive in, play with it, let me know what you think. I'm sure a dozen video bloggers are right now making posts on the differences between O1 Pro and O1. We will know within 24 hours what, what the internet thinks. But let's get to the unit economics. Why did they price it at $200? The reason has to do with the game they're playing. So as a model maker, OpenAI is inherently negative cash flow. They cannot spend any less than they are currently spending and hope to reach their ultimate goal of reaching super intelligence first. In fact, they should probably be spending more. And yet their subscriptions, their cash flow is all based on what they currently have in market, which is not super intelligence. It's not even general intelligence. It's a large language model. It's extremely good. They keep getting better. We're going to have debates in the next few days on whether O1 Pro reaches general intelligence. I guarantee it. But regardless, if it's available and you're paying for it, you are paying for a trailing edge indicator in their strategy. They've already shipped it. They have to monetize that piece of intelligence and somehow invest 10x more, 100x more in what's coming. Inherently, their business model is negative cash flow. And they are only charging people 20 bucks a month. And they reveal, like the CFO and Sam both gave interesting sort of interviews in the last couple of weeks, and they revealed some fundamental numbers that suggest to me they have to raise prices, which is why I'm not surprised by 200 bucks a month. They are running at $4.3 billion in ARR right now, roughly. 18 million paying users, 1 million on the business plan, which is like 60 bucks a month. And at the end of the day, that does not add up to anywhere close to what they need for their goals, even with the gigantic like six billion and change or whatever that they raised from venture capital. It's not close. They need more. And the only way that they can get more is to release models that allow them to charge more, which is why I argued literally in a video an hour before this, this whole thing released that Sam Altman had a strategic imperative to release fast. Lo and behold, he released fast and they must charge 200 bucks a month because they need iPhone level unit economics to pay for what they're building. At the end of the day, an iPhone costs people close to 200 bucks a month. It just gets hidden in a phone plan. Now, fancy iPhones, consumers have choice. They can go down market. I know all of that, but just from a rough unit of value perspective, 200 bucks is close to an iPhone payment. It's close to a car plan. It is not what you pay for software subscriptions. And so they are breaking the category and they are suggesting implicitly that this will replace so much human labor for the researcher or for the entrepreneur that it is worth that price point. So they have to be betting on essentially Tinder's business model. Tinder's business model is that like 1% of users are going to pay essentially anything for a date. And so they just have prices that just keep stacking and going higher and higher. 
And ChatGPT knows that only like 1% of their users pay 60 bucks, bucks now for the business plan. Less than that will pay 200 bucks even for a better model. But they can charge those guys kind of anything they want, right? Like the, what is the entrepreneur going to pay for a model that allows him to delay hiring by six months or a year? A whole lot more than 200 bucks a month if he has to. And so there's a lot of elasticity in that upper sliver of their user base. And I think that's part of their plan to monetize. But they also, if they want iPhone level cash flow, do need to figure out how to get ordinary users who either are not paying on the free plan or are paying 20 bucks a month to convert over to this expensive plan en masse, right? Like as a bulk segment. No one has figured that out yet. They're not even trying with this release, but I argue that their cash flow demands Apple level, Apple level revenue. They are burning too much cash not to have it. They need those kinds of unit economics to justify. O1 is out, O1 Pro is out. You have heard my little note on pricing and strategy. Let me know what you think of the new models.